Welcome to In Our Words, a weekly segment of LMP's opinion section that highlights some of the week's most thought-provoking issues. The following are the opinions of the LMP editorial board and not the news department. It's hard to fathom, especially if you're one of those people who gets the night sweats if your state inspection is a day or two overdue, or you just realize your driver's license is about to expire. Not to worry, license scoff laws. Pennsylvania, at least when it comes to license renewal, is most forgiving. As LMP reported, it takes six offenses before someone faces a mandatory 30-day jail sentence for driving with a suspended license under Pennsylvania law. James P. Irvin of Nottingham was driving with a suspended license when police say he caused a May 17th hit-and-run crash in East Lampeter Township that involved a school bus and injured 16 people. Irvin's license was suspended in 2004, and he had been cited five times since then with driving with a suspended license. Republican State Representative Keith Greiner is working on a comprehensive rewrite of the state's DUI laws. He told LNP that he would like the issue of unlicensed drivers addressed in either his pending legislation or a standalone bill to reduce the penalty threshold for repeat offenders. The current six-strike law is simply unacceptable and needs to be amended. People who drive with suspended licenses are many more times likely to be in an accident and about three times more likely to cause a fatal crash than those who are properly licensed, according to data collected by the Federal Highway Traffic Safety Administration. In the past five years, at least seven people have been killed in Lancaster County by drivers whose licenses have been suspended. Pennsylvania can right a long-standing wrong by putting a system in place that holds accountable unlicensed drivers who disregard the law. And we hope lawmakers from both parties can work together to come up with legislation to that end. If the image of a battered school bus, windshield shattered, lying on its side, doesn't inspire change, nothing will. Is there anything more emblematic of Harrisburg than the State Ethics Commission, forced to limp along as it attempts to keep our elected officials honest? This is not a commonwealth that can afford a hobbled ethics commission. Like other state commissions, the Pennsylvania State Ethics Commission has vacancies that are making its operations difficult. The commission is supposed to have seven members. Ethics Commission Executive Director Robert P. Caruso told the caucus an LMP media group watchdog publication that focuses on state government earlier this year that the organization's two vacancies mean that if a member is absent because of, say, illness, it can be difficult to achieve a quorum. Ailing commissioners have participated by phone when necessary. Public officials need to be held accountable for ethical lapses. Any more stress on the overtaxed ethics commission will mean it's unable to open necessary investigations. This should concern us all. Leaving vacancies unfilled isn't a good look. It conveys the impression that state officials aren't that concerned about ethics. In recent years, we've had state lawmakers accepting cash bribes, liquor board executives accepting thousands of dollars worth of gifts from vendors, and an embattled attorney general appointing her twin sister to a high paying job in her office. Filling open seats on the Ethics Commission ought to be given greater priority. That'll do it for In Our Words this week. If you have an opinion you would like to share with us, you can email us at LancasterLetters at LMPNews.com. You can also see what we think in the opinion section at LancasterOnline.com. I'm Rich Maneri. We'll see you next time.